Hey everybody, this is Dr. Nick with the Springfield Wellness Center. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about IT band syndrome. So the IT band is a long muscle that uh, it's the iliotibial band and the ilium is basically uh, half of your pelvis. So there's two ilium that make up your, your pelvis. And the iliotibial band starts here at the top of the ilium and runs down to the tibia, which is the bigger bone in the lower part of your leg. So that muscle stretches all the way and it passes the knee. Now, a lot of people that, that run or that are active tend to get really tight IT bands. And usually that comes from a um, um, imbalance in the pelvis or possibly a problem in the foot or in the arch. Uh, so we're going to talk about a couple different things that we do here in the office and then something that you can do at home to help stretch it out. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the adjustment that we can help to try to help level out the pelvis. So when the pelvis is out of alignment, uh, the ilium on one side can rock back while the other side can rock forward. The side that rocks back can actually pull this uh, femur head into the, the pelvis a little bit further and shorten the leg. So if your pelvis is rocked back on the right side, your right leg is going to be short. So when we do an adjustment on the pelvis, and we'll use the spine here so we can see where we contact, but basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be contacting right here on the top of the ilium so that it's going to rock that forward and they're going to be contacting here on the bottom of the ilium so it'll kick this one back. So when we do that together, we drop on the table. The table uh, dropping helps us not have to put as much pressure uh, or force into the body so it helps aid in the adjustment. So when we get this pelvis uh, level and stable, uh, the, the feet tend to be uh, even at the bottom. So when you're running, if you have any kind of leg length uh, discrepancy, uh, you're going to be putting more pressure on one side or the other. That short leg can create that iliotibial um, tightness. So what we want to do first is we want to make sure that the pelvis is level, and then we'll talk about some other things over in the fitness center that we can do to help it more. So we talked a little bit uh, earlier about the uh, pelvis being level and how important that is to the IT band health. And uh, the next part is going to be the other end of the leg, which is going to be the foot. So whenever you have uh, arches that are not as full, it tends to hyperpronate the foot, which means that it makes the foot flatter. When it makes the foot flatter, that creates uh, torque into the knee, which then cre helps create tightness in the IT band. So in the office here, uh, Dr. Rob, who is our uh, orthotic specialist, he actually uh, will make a mold of your foot and then make a custom orthotic uh, in-house. So he'll, he's got an oven and clay that he makes it very specific to your foot. So those will really help give you the support that you need on uh, the foot side and then the adjustments are going to help level out the pelvis. I did want to talk about our Alter G treadmill uh, which is a nice piece of equipment we have in here for people that are interested in uh, getting back uh, to running uh, before they're 100% healed. This, uh, this treadmill is really nice because what it does is it's an anti-gravity treadmill that can take away up to 80% of a person's body weight. So if they're still recovering from a lower extremity injury, they're able to do this, uh, still be able to stay, still be able to stay mobile as well as uh, get some cardio and without having to put the wear and tear on the body. So the way this works is uh, we have these shorts that the runner would get into. They would step in here. Obviously, this would be down. This would get zipped in to the, uh, the, the plastic bubble. Uh, air gets pushed into the bubble and it creates, uh, it creates an atmosphere where we can take away, like I said, up to 80% of the body weight. So you're able to run, it's a normal treadmill, but you'll, you'll be getting way less wear and tear on your body uh, if you've taken away anywhere from 30, 40, 50%, all the way up to 80%. So this is a good way to stay active and, and stay healthy while you're trying to recover. So we've talked about a couple different things that can actually cause the IT band uh, tightness itself. Uh, but now we're going to talk about what can we do for the IT band once it's gotten tight. 
so there's a couple things you can do at home. Uh, and then the one thing that, that we really stress here in the office is to make sure if you do have uh, soft tissue tightness that you're getting in for a massage. So our massage club is a really affordable way to get regular massage. It's only $50 a month and that gets you one hour of massage per month or you could break that down into two half hours. And our therapists work a lot with runners and a lot with athletes so they, uh, they have a lot of experience with the IT band syndrome. Uh, but having somebody spend some real time getting in there on the uh, IT band itself, I think uh, would be a, a money well spent. So two things that you can do at home are going to be uh, foam rolling the IT band, uh, which we have our foam roller here, and then another stretch that you can use, just use your body weight on. So if you have a foam roller at home, again, the, the IT band starts below your knee and runs all the way up to your hips. So the more that you can uh, work the, the IT band across the foam roller, uh, across the entire uh, IT band, the better it'll be. So we will start at the hip and just using your body weight, Kind of move you along, trying to stay as much on the IT band as possible. And once you kind of find a good spot, it's a whole lot easier. And so just rolling as far as you can and doing about five to 10 passes usually should do it. And I always suggest to try to do both sides just to make sure that you're, you're hitting both just to be um, equal. So another thing that you can do at home is actually do a body weight stretch on the IT band itself. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, you wanna be doing three to five of these per day and maybe holding it for about 10 to 15 seconds uh, per stretch. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find something to hold on to because you're gonna be balancing kind of on one leg. So just find something to hold on to. Bring the leg that you're gonna stretch behind you and go as far out as you can. And then you're gonna just lean into it. And the more you can lean into it, the more you're going to feel that stretch. And you want to make sure that you're trying to feel the stretch at the top of the hip and at the knee as much as you can. Um, so if you or anybody you know has an IT band problem, make sure that you like the video, share it with someone, or, uh, or comment and uh, tag someone in the comments below. If you have any questions, uh, head over to wellnessspringfield.com. You can communicate with us there. You can find out more information about our office. Also, if you have any questions, you want to talk to a doctor, uh, give us a call at 726-0422. We'll see you next week. Extension of the spine will help bring oxygen. Hi, this is Nancy Thompson, the functional fitness specialist at the Springfield Wellness Center. Hips, knees, and feet were designed to be in alignment, particularly when we're moving forward or propelling ourselves forward. And if you're someone who uh, is active in walking or running and have anything that's out of alignment or out of balance, chances are at some point down your kinetic chain from your hips down through your feet, there might be some irritation. In fact, um, distance runners commonly complain of knee, uh, of pain on the outside of their knee. And quite likely it's probably IT band syndrome. Your iliotibial band um, goes from your ilium or your hip down to your tibia. And if things are out of alignment from the hips down through the feet, uh, particularly because you have weak hip or gluteal muscles, um, quite likely you'll eventually experience um, some irritation there, which is known as IT band syndrome or injury, um, particularly those distance runners or people who do a lot of forward momentum uh, activities. So um, let's talk about getting the hips back in balance and the muscles evenly aligned and strengthened there and quite likely we can avoid those injuries or certainly recover from them once they happen. Um, we want to start exercises if it's certainly if you've got any discomfort going on currently very beginner exercises. Um, isolating the muscles in the hips and the glutes to um, strengthen those. So we're going to get on the mat and start with a real basic sideline position stacking the shoulders, the hips, and the knees, and we're gonna do the basic clam exercise where we're gonna activate those deep uh, hip abductor muscles and some glute muscles and lift the knee and lower the knee. Looks really simple, but it's uh, harder than it looks if you've got weak hip abductor muscles. So this is a nice safe move to do for anyone who maybe already has some irritation going on in the knee area. So I'll do about 10 Set, uh, reps of those, a couple sets on all these exercises I'm going to suggest, two sets of 10 on everything, but definitely do both sides because we're working to build balance and alignment. 
Um, secondly, we can stay in the side lying position, lengthen the legs, and this top leg, we're just gonna do a basic lift. Again, it looks simple, but we wanna do it well. We wanna lift and we wanna lower so that we're using the range of motion in the hip and building strength, starting out with the knee and foot in alignment with the hip. That's your basic hip abduction leg lift. And then we want to add a little external rotation on another set of 10 to activate deeper muscles in the hip and do another set of 10 of those. So there's two different uh, leg lifts here with the foot forward and the hip externally rotated with the toe pointing up towards the ceiling. Two sets of 10 of those as well. And then we can easily move to our backside, going to a reclined position, have our feet Flat on the floor, hips width apart. Again, having the toes, feet in alignment with the, the knees and the hips. Let your head rest back and your shoulders stay down as you lift the hips in a shoulder bridge, or some people call these hip thrusts. But we want to lift and squeeze the glutes and then lower the hips back down. Squeeze and lift, holding it for a second or two, and then lower back down for two sets of 10 of the basic shoulder bridge. Again, building glute strength that's going to help get the hips in balance, so it's going to help keep the knee in alignment, so we avoid the irritation on the outside of the knee. If that's something that's pretty simple for you, or um, you, you get a, a quick level of um, strength in your glutes, you could also progress that a little bit more challenging, and you could keep one foot down, extend one, up, one foot up to the ceiling, and do single leg bridges to really fire up the glutes, and make sure, again, you're doing it evenly on both sides. So those are three basic, simple exercises to start with when you're looking to strengthen hip and glute muscles to help prevent um, those kinetic chain injuries, particularly the IT band syndrome that is so common in runners or uh, people who do long distance training. This is Nancy Thompson, your functional fitness specialist, um, asking you to share this if, it, if it's helped you and it, it could help one of your running friends. Um, you have a great day. To find out more about the Springfield Wellness Center and all the other services we offer, head over to our Facebook page or check out our YouTube channel.